Carlo Mann was the eldest son of Charles Martel, Major Domo or Mayor of the Palace and Duke of the Franks, and his wife Crotrud of Treves. On Charles's death, Karl Oman and his brother Pepin the Short succeeded to their father's legal positions, Karl Oman in Austrasia, and Pepin in Neustria. He was a member of the family later called the Carolingians and it can be argued that he was instrumental in consolidating their power at the expense of the ruling Merovingian kings of the Franks. He withdrew from public life in 747 to take up the monastic habit, the first of a new type of saintly king, according to Norman Cantor, more interested in religious devotion than royal power, who frequently appeared in the following three centuries and who was an indication of the growing impact of Christian piety on Germanic society. Assumption of power. After the death of his father, power was not initially divided to include Grifo, another of Charles's sons, by his second wife Swanachild. This was per Charles's wishes, though Grifo demanded a portion of the realm from his brothers, who refused him. By 742, Karl Oman and Pippin had ousted their half-brother, Grifo, and forced him into a monastery, and each turned his attention towards his own area of influence as Major Domo, Pippin in the west and Karl Oman in the east, which was the Carolingian base of power. With Grifo contained, the two mares, who had not yet proved themselves in battle in defense of the realm as their father had, on the initiative of Karl Oman, installed the Merovingian Childeric III as king. Even though Martel had left the throne vacant since the death of Theodoric IV in 737, unlike most medieval instances of fraternal power sharing, Karl Oman and Pippin for seven years seemed at least willing to work together, certainly. They undertook many military actions together. Karl Oman joined Pippin against Hunald of Aquitaine's rising in 742 and again in 745. Pippin assisted Karl Oman against the Saxons in 742-43, when Duke Theodoric was forced to come to terms, and against Odilo, Duke of Bavaria, in 742 and again in 744, when peace was established between the brothers and their brother-in-law, for Odilo had married their sister Hiltruda, strengthening of the dynasty. In his realm, Karl Oman strengthened his authority in part via his support of the Anglo-Saxon missionary Winfried, the so-called Apostle of the Germans, whom he charged with restructuring the church in Austrasia. This was in part the continuation of a policy begun under his grandfather, Pepin of Herstal, and continued under his father, Charles Martel, who erected four dioceses in Bavaria and gave them Boniface as archbishop and metropolitan over all Germany east of the Rhine, with his seat at Mainz. Boniface had been under Charles Martel's protection from 723 on, indeed the saint himself explained to his old friend, Daniel of Winchester, that without it he could neither administer his church, defend his clergy, nor prevent idolatry. Karl Oman was instrumental in convening the Concilium Germanicum in 742, the first major synod of the Catholic Church to be held in the eastern regions of the Frankish Kingdom, chaired jointly by him and Boniface. The synod ruled that priests were not allowed to bear arms or to host females in their houses and that it was one of their primary tasks to eradicate pagan beliefs. His father had frequently confiscated church property to reward his followers and to pay for the standing army that had brought him victory at Tours. By 742 the Carolingians were wealthy enough to pay their military retainers and support the church. For Karl Oman, a deeply religious man, it was a duty of love, for Pippin a practical duty. Both saw the necessity of strengthening the ties between their house and the church. Karl Oman donated the land for one of Boniface's most important foundations, the Monastery of Fulda. Political Ruthlessness Despite his piety, Karl Oman could be ruthless towards real or perceived opponents. After repeated armed revolts and rebellions, Karl Oman in 746 convened an assembly of the Alemanni magnates at Cannstatt and then had most of the magnates, numbering in the thousands, 
arrested and executed for high treason in the blood court at Cannstatt. This eradicated virtually the entire tribal leadership of the Aelmanni and ended the independence of the tribal duchy of Aelmania, which was thereafter governed by counts appointed by their Frankish overlords. These actions strengthened Karl Ehrman's position, and that of the family as a whole, especially in terms of their rivalries with other leading barbarian families such as the Bavarian Age of Alfings. Withdrawal from public life. On 15 August 747, Karl Ehrman renounced his position as major domo and withdrew to a monastic life, being tonsured in Rome by Pope Zachary. All sources from the period indicate that Karl Ehrman's renunciation of the world was volitional, although some have speculated that he went to Rome for other, unspecified reasons and was encouraged to remain in Rome by the Pope, acting on a request from Pepin to keep Karl Ehrman in Italy. Karl Ehrman founded a monastery on Monte Sorita and then went to Monte Cassino. All sources from the period indicate that he believed his calling was the Church. He withdrew to Monte Cassino and spent most of the remainder of his life there, presumably in meditation and prayer. His son, Drogo, demanded from Pepin the short his father's share of the family patrimony, but was swiftly neutralized. Seven years after Karl Ehrman's retirement and on the eve of his death, he once more stepped briefly on the public stage. In 754, Pope Stephen II had begged Pepin, now king, to come to his aid against the king of the Lombards, Astolf. Karl Ehrman left Monte Cassino to visit his brother to ask him not to march on Italy. Pippin was unmoved, and imprisoned Karl Ehrman in Vienne, where he died on 17 August. He was buried in Monte Cassino.